to the final here of RCGP round two. It's an hour. It's an hour of fun for everyone. This is a different. Frank, just turn it that way and I'm going to... No, not you. The camera. Frank's just turned round. Turn the camera, you moron. Anyway, right. So this is the uh, this is the way the real work's done during the course of the event. These are our mechanics. So, quick... so how important is your role, John? Uh, the most. <laughs> I've got to keep the boys uh, fed with water, I think. It's going to be a very long uh, race of attrition. I don't think it's going to be a bit of a tortoise and a hare job, we're hoping, because uh, we're, uh, we're definitely not the hare. So we're, we're coming as the tortoise. We're going to play that card. Our stuff is normally really reliable, so touch wood. We'll just see what we can do. So for Drink beer. Drinking beer is a good thing. So coming to further down, we have, we have Beat. Yeah. Um, are you actually on the fuel gun? No, nope, I'm holding the car. Holding the car. So it's, it's Mr. Ongara on the fuel gun. Not <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, no one, no one is fueling up Davide. Yeah, see, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, Mr. Hess, uh, Max, is a, everyone's put ah, oh, oh, you need to find the Mr. Hess. So, uh, <laughs> you're, you're very happy. So, um, so you, you have the key job of putting the fuel in or are you holding the car? Yeah, fuel in, fuel in. And uh, have you practiced for hours yeah. and morning? One. The car and fuel in one. Oh, just you. One oh, it's, yes. look at that. It's a miracle in human form. Fantastic. So, <laughs> let's see if I can find some more. Ah, here's a, here's a famous mechanic. We'll go over that way because we can see probably with the... Um, Jeremy, you come all this way, not to race, to a different country, just to put some fuel in the car. Exactly. That's good. It's better for me, Nana, to only uh, pit compared to run, drive, prepare my car. I'm too busy for that. All right, so, so are you the lifter or the fueler? I'm the lifter, yeah. So, you know, what's the most important job? Is it lifting more important than fueling? Or? No, I think that the, the dad of Juan Carlos is used to that, so I don't want to confuse them. So I can do that for you. Great. So, so I'll just move on one more to the most famous fueler and uh, lifter, because he's also a world champion in his own right, Adrian Bertin. Adrian, um, give us how much practice do you do at this pit stuff, or, or do you just turn up on the day are you are you have you got david running around laps you're practicing the pit stop no we use we did it at the start but now with uh, we do so many races that today everything is uh, pretty organized we make a couple of tests during the practice and then uh, let's see what happens during the race it's very hot how is that going to affect the engines and the fuel consumption yeah it, it's very difficult uh, yeah, there is traction uh, so you have uh, to be on the safe side of the setup of the engine but uh, yes, normally we are worked to, to be ready for that condition too, so normally everything should be right. Great, thanks Adrian. Just over here we have Jake. Now, Jake, what I've noticed is that you've actually spent the entire period since the last race pitting for other people, which kind of means, um, have you actually done any work on your own car? I did manage to glue a new set of tyres with green wheels. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's the key point I was coming to. So you have done this pit stop work. Do you think it's the lifter or the fuel that's more important? The fueler, but I did it alone, so I did both. Obviously, obviously, <laughs> I'm right handed, but I use the gun in the left hand because when you do it this way, it's faster that way. You're a walking miracle, you really are. Don't forget, this is an anti clockwise track, that's why. Um, let's see if I can find it. The drivers are hiding, you see. I've, I've attacked the uh, so let's see, we wander around, we make move this bit. Oh, there's Elliot over in the corner. Elliot, I mean, this should get, get me a camera shot over there. Elliot, am I right that you are the only person to be disappointed not to be in Super Bowl? <laughs> yeah. No, it's all good. I mean, with an hour, uh, anything can happen. It's going to be a, a hot, long race. I mean, we, we talk about you know, the, the endurance part, but I mean, I, I, I'm so you've lived here, Mike, but this is like the hottest I can remember doing a race. You may have had some uh, international experiences where it's warmer, but it's 35 degrees. Yeah, it's definitely hot. Um, yeah, and it's not, there's not many races like this, but 
we just have to just uh, you know deal with it and uh, do the best we can. Great stuff, thank you, Alex. Just going to move across to the person who's probably going to have the most trouble. This is, this is the man I feel most sorry for. It's boiling hot. You've got to race an hour on one leg. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard. I'm a little scared about but So I'm here to race. Uh, I, I took a chair for a little help in me during the pits or something, but it's super hot. I think it will be hard for everyone. Uh, for me more, but it's the same for everyone. Is, I mean, I don't know too much, but is, is the leg actually giving you pain? Is, is it hurting? Not a lot, but after 20 minutes, it start to be. I have pain, um, and it's not easy to drive in this condition. But <laughs> and we'll finish with our pole man, Juan Carlos Casi. Well done on the uh, Super Pole. You are starting from pole, therefore, well, be an easy win. Uh, it will be super difficult. One hour here, <laughs> this hot is super difficult, but we will do our best. You're from Spain. You're used to it being this hot. Yeah, but where I live is less. Less warm. Less warm. Less. It's always less warm. <laughs> That's one so that kind of a, a, a view, a spirit, a talk around the pits before we start the one-hour final. Uh, we may have something special for you as far as uh, inserts during the race is concerned. But let's go back to Keenan to pick up as these guys fire their engines for the warm-up. And we are back and getting ready for the 60-minute final. And uh, this is going to be a grueling test for these drivers. You heard Zankatine talk about his leg. He's feeling pain after 20 minutes. It's hot. Fuel mileage is going to be an issue. Tire wear is going to be an issue. But uh, we have, uh, starting from up front, Juan Carlos Canas, Davide Angara in second. Well done for the young Hampusberg. He'll be happy with that third place finish. Tom Robin, great run, great run in fourth. Elliot Boots in fifth. Lee Martin in sixth. David Ronnefalk not happy with seventh. Zankatin in eighth. And Joseph Quaygrain in ninth. Leonardo Valente in tenth. Max Hess in eleventh. And Kevin Brunson in twelfth. And this time, of course, actually it means something because it's not a gate start, it's a grid start. So the, there are, obviously all starts have an element of randomness in them, uh, Lefty, but this one, of course, is a bit less random because uh, you're starting in line. So looking at the points overall, Dave Ronnefuck has the red numbers. He's taking the overall lead. He has a 47 points. Joe Bornhouse and Cole Tullard, of course, are not at this event. Uh, Ongara's already on 30 with 25 points for the win. It is not unheard of. It will take a bad result for Dave for actually Ongara to take the overall lead today. And Ongara has looked a lot happier here this weekend than David has. Hampersburg putting in a great performance so far this weekend. Certainly I think the surprise. Him and Tom Roban have both been way above where I thought they were going to be uh, so far. And he's put them on 11 points. Um, Horn, Heckert, Vale we won't see them again probably till the fourth round in the States. Lee Martin, constant scorer. Elliot Boots has picked up 21 points during the weekend. Uh, Leo Valente Completely anonymous today, but he could do something in the final. Uh, Juan Carlos Canas obviously um, had a bad final yesterday, but he's on pole for this one. So that's 14 and 15. Cody Watson not appearing in this film because he's back home in the States. Now, of course, one thing it doesn't matter who turns up and doesn't is the team event because you always have two representatives. S-Works, they are leading at the moment by 98 points and 94. The slight gain by Scudia Scampi Ross, a team associated with uh, Ongaro scoring well and Tom Roban doing well today. They're just four behind. This could very much, check. this could go either way. You can't really permit to predict which one that, who'll be leading at the end of uh, round two. Mayako on 74 would need a miracle to get to the lead and, and problems with the other two. And then you've got Beach on 56. Nemo Gar on 47. They would hope for a good result. Lee might have a bit more luck. They'd have a few more points. And if this will see JQ SM, in fairness, JQ has looked very good today. Uh, he's, had a, he's been out in the front on several occasions. So, I'm, so he must be due for a big win soon, a few, a few pints of points. I wouldn't say a win, no. but uh, maybe better than last. I reckon top five. I think JQ could get a top five. I, oh. think, I think Wiley Old Fox in this weather, a little bit of luck, and you could see JQ in the top five. I'm not, I'm not putting any money on it, obviously. <laughs> well, he drives conservative enough. I'm going to ask you a question, because this is my, and I'm not asking you to win. It's very hot. It's an hour. or well, 58 percent. How many cars will cross the finish still running competitively? So not, not less than three laps behind. 
Well, be, it's going to be interesting. Um, we lost quite a few in South Carolina, yeah, and I, th- I think I'm, I'm saying eight. I think really, eight cars, I think, I think the heat will get to the cars and the engines and everything else. Um, you know, we only had to, we've not had anything longer than twenty minutes. The longest final had so far is a twenty minute final yeah. for um, so we're, we're two du- tripling that into unknown territory. So uh, my feeling is that could definitely be um, very, very uh, difficult for everyone involved. Yeah, I'm still uh, contemplating Angaro's choice to run super soft. Uh, because, and I asked him again, he was up there gluing them, and he says, yeah, I can just do it. He, I guess he's relying on the ability to, to have, to his ability to drive on both super soft tires at the end of the race. So, we shall see. Tire attrition is going to be key here. You're going to probably see a lot of guys just save tires, and I think it's going to come down to a battle of attrition. But let's see how many cars finish. Uh, maybe they all finish. We'll see. Technology has gotten a lot better, but heat any elements will do it. Okay, now it's a chance for us to meet the runners and riders for this, the one hour or 58 minutes and two lap main final here on RCGP round four. And first off, for the only numerical order, that is our, our leader in the points down here. It's David Ronnefuck, the Viking, the Swede. Let's say hello to David and find out how he's going to approach this final. For the endurance final, it's all about being there in the end. Uh, even if you get a bad start, you just have to keep your head down. Well, we all know that the Viking did that in South Carolina. Can he do it again this weekend? He's had a bad weekend, bad luck. We shall see at the end of 60 minutes. Next out, of course, it's uh, Lee Martin, number 12. Lee has a lot of experience in long finals. Let's see what Lee's going to do in this endurance final. In the endurance final, I'm going to try and be consistent, smooth, try not to make mistakes. Hopefully other people will. And Lee looked good in South Carolina as well. He's looked good all weekend. He had mechanical issues in South Carolina. Took him out early. Hopefully he finishes today and see what he can do. Uh, great performance yesterday. Been anonymous so far today. What's the tactics for Leonardo Valente in this endurance race? In the endurance final, I'm going to try to be as consistent as possible. Yes, Leo was very fast yesterday for the Beach RC team with his S-Works car. Hopefully he can find that speed today and finish his 60-minute final. So next up, we will have the man who's on pole. He's won Super Pole. He's won, won the rounds. It's one Carlos Canas. Is he a clown? Is he a winner? What's he going to do for the, for for the, the finals, endurance race? For the my plan is to start safe and after not do mistakes. Well, I think they'll be glad he's starting safe. Everyone else in the field will be anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they cut across left. You want to say exactly the same thing. <laughs> who's next to, uh, to introduce themselves to us? And it is, of course, the... Frenchman Tom Rabat, Associated Scoob Rassi. Great performance so far today. Tom, how are you looking at this long final? For the Indian final, I, uh, I stay back and after I give my best for, for to fight with the best uh, driver. So next up will be uh, Alex Zanchettin, the man who I feel the most sorry for because he's trying to do this on a broken leg. So he's basically standing on one leg with a kind of support on the other. Alex, apart from just surviving, how are you approaching the final? In the hand runs final, my goal is to finish the race. Yeah, he will want to. It's going to be difficult for him. He said after 20 minutes, he's feeling some pain. He's got to be up there for an hour. Tomorrow, he gets the cast off. Next up, the man who knows more about endurance races than anybody here. He's just done a 24-hour at Nürburgring. And he's done a six-hour at Paul Ricard. But this is just an hour at the Osby team. Hello, Max Hess. Endurance final will definitely be a long one. It's very hot out here. So try to keep the head cool, and then we will see where we end up. Max has been very impressive this weekend as well uh, for a part-time RC car driver. He's doing very well, and uh, full scale meets RC. And the man who, surprisingly to us, but not to himself, got himself into Super Pole, starting third, it's Hampus Berg. In the endurance final, my plan is to just take it calm. If I get a bad start, I just don't stress up. And Hampus has looked good all weekend. He looked great in the Super, in the super Pole. He's comfortable with his car. Uh, I would like to see Hampus get a top five. Next up is the man who had a great Friday with a win in, in the uh, rush. A reasonable yesterday with a second. It's Elliot Boots. He's a local boy. How's he going to take this hot hours final? An endurance final. We're going to play the long game. See how it goes. See where we're at. Uh, but same as sprint race. I'm going to do whatever's necessary. And once we get in a good position, we'll bring it home. And our next driver will be the man probably who, despite starting second, is the favourite. It's the hometown boy. It's Davide Angaro. I'm listening today because whatever he said, it's going to be golden. Yeah, for the long final, uh, we will try our best. Uh, we'll, we'll make uh, one less two stop than the other. So we try on uh, 
consistency and drive also without mistake for the long main final. Well, what can you say about Angaro? His record speaks for himself. <laughs> Favorite going into this, I would say. And it's, the next car out is the, uh, the late replacement of the Argama team. It's Kevin Brunsden. Kevin, you have the eight on your side. What about long distance races on your side? In the endurance final, I'm just going to go for it and try and bring it home to win. Send it without <laughs> responsibility. That's my motto. That's always good when you're the only person in the heat. And finally, it's for the JQSM team. It's JQ himself. As I've said, impressive today. How's he approaching this final? In the endurance final, my strategy is to endure. I wait for everyone else to break and DNF, and I'll finish seven. <laughs> well, he, he definitely drives conservative enough not to break. I so. fifth, not seventh. So, you know, we kind of, we kind of agree. That's, that's, that's my favorite quote of the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just JQ will take the car back to the, uh, the pits, and uh, he will then um, bring it all in, and then they're going to go straight out, and we will start the one-hour final. on. Out they come. And it is 58 laps. 58 minutes. 58 laps even longer. 58 minutes plus two laps. So that's a pretty long run. So you're looking at 59 minutes. Um, people are struggling to get much past seven and a half minutes. So it's going to be at least six, if not seven stops. Stops have got so much quicker these days, though. Max Hess has got a problem on the line. <laughs> He's flamed out. We're going to have to restart Max's car. And in the 15, it is running, so just a simple flame out. Luckily, he's running. He's going to get back into position in 11th. Let's watch them go. Down and quiet. And they're away. And straight away, it's Kanas into the lead from Ongaro. They've gone off in really in, in order with Hampersburg keeping third. And kind of a drop back there. I think in fourth, it's Roban, but he's kind of a little bit of a delay. Fifth is uh, Ronafout and sixth is JQ. And a huge gap then to seventh place, which is Boots. And eighth place is Martin. Ninth place, Brunsden. And the rest of them come through. Last place, unfortunately, is Hess, who's just behind, I think, Zanchetti. I'm not quite sure if last is Zanchetti or, or Quad Green. They're both very similar at the moment. It is, in fact, Zanchetti who's got that fifth place knock. Oh, and, and ready a problem for uh, Ronafout. Ronafout's flamed on lap one. There's just no luck for that man. And he's trying to get restarted now by Adrian Berta. I can see that. So the car is being restarted as the race continues on. He's going to lose at least a lap. He did actually roll over the timing, but it could be all over already. Bertan can't get it started. They're coming across the finish the second lap already. It's on Garo and the S-Works fight each other. And we may even have a bit of information. Let's see what's going on. It's panic all around as they try and start the car again. Fueled up. She's yep, she's running, but they've lost two laps. Oh, honestly, Ronafuck, if he didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. Felix, what happened just now with Ronafuck? Um, his uh, fuel line just broke. Yeah. Unfortunate bad luck. The pressure, one, the pressure one. He has 60 minutes to catch up. I think he's going to need about 60 days, to be honest. But um, thank you, Keenan, there on the spot in the pit, reporting for RCGP. So the pressure line, that's a line that goes from the exhaust pipe into the tank, and that actually pressurizes the fuel. So effectively, it's kind of like a, a virtual fuel pump using the pressure of the tank. But... Uh, the net result is that we have a first and second battle, which doesn't involve Ronafout, and this is, could be a case where we do see Oncaro take over the lead of the championship, because he's going to pick up some points, as he has a problem himself. But first, second down the line, it's Kanas and Ongaro, who I have to say, really, it's been all about these two this weekend, with potentially possibly Boots as well, but there's been a right amount of beef between them. Ongaro very, very unhappy with, with the starts in both the finals yesterday from Canass, uh, so much that he called him a clown. He was upset. He was, I've never heard um, Ongaro swearing. He was swearing in English, which was quite interesting. Um, about how he was after he won. So he's upset that upset after he won. I, mean, I hate to think how it's even if he hadn't won. But they come round and produce another lap, and they are nailed together. It's the 23, the red car of Juan Carlos Canass in second. It's David Ongaro. Third, still going really well, Hampersburg. Fourth place is Tom Robin. Then it's Zanchettin, Boots, Martin, Valente, Brunson, Quagreen, Hesse, and a long way back. David Ronafak. But right, again, the battle is joined. 
as they fly over. It's a case really where you, you, it's hard to tell. It is easy to follow than to lead, and that obviously does give a little bit of advantage to Ongaro. And certainly running a, a, a sort of, not destructive, but kind of a defensive run there from Canas. And they go around the Italian corner over the ditch jump. Up and over the quad. It's a three, it's a two. Break hard, so there's no gap underneath for the associated Scampi Rosso car, the blue and white machine of Ongaro to get through. This is super early stage. We've already lost Ronnefuck effectively from a chance of winning. He's not trying to get some points because obviously he's lapped down and we may see a number of people having problems later on in this very hot day, but he's just, there's not, everyone's not going to break down. So that's the issue. There they go. Up and over, first and second nailed together. Been running now for, oh, nearly four minutes. So Ongaro, half a second behind. The time is immaterial because you can see the gap here. It's, it's a case where it will ebb and flow based on where they are. And Canas, oh, again, looking, it's interesting. Canas is, is it kind of a way where you can, certainly in 12th racing, it's, it's quite a well-known fact, you can actually sucker someone into a mistake in that you, um, if you go just a little bit wider around a corner, they'll try and cut in. They tend to cut in too sharp and they'll tend to hit the barrier. So it's, something we've all done in a rather unpleasant way sometimes. Just, if someone's right on your tail, you think they're a bit quicker. The only way you need to get rid of them is make them a crash. Um, I'm not saying that's what Canas was doing. Oh, and it's a roll. So immediately a problem for uh, Ronnefelt. Ronnefelt rolls. So it's all going against type so far. Comes in at the end of the uh, landing that. Yes, it's, it's, it's unfortunately on a, on a camera change, but he landed it. He just turned too sharply. Because he's, what he's trying to do is get the inside. He's trying to think, oh, I can get the inside. I can annoy Canas. And... It's now a 3.8 second. Now, the interesting thing is now, we'll find out in the next couple of laps really whether the basic speed of Ongaro is that much quicker than Kanas, because obviously he's now not sitting on Kanas's tail, staring at the wing. Um, he is in clear air, effectively, and Kanas himself just doesn't know, I think it's just lap Brunsden. So they go across this time. It was 3.847 seconds last time. Let's see where it is now. Kanas goes in front of me. Brunsden goes in front of me. There is... Ronifer. So you're getting two tenths, but Ronifer, but, but uh, Kanas overtook someone. So uh, that doesn't that just means that basically it's probably they're about going about the same speed. Third and fourth, it's Berg and Robin. And Elliot Boots is in fifth. He's not out of it, Elliot. Even now I'm sure he's going to take it easy to work his way through. Sanchez is in sixth, Valenti in seventh, Martin in eighth. Cog Green waiting for everyone to break down is in ninth. And then you have Hesse, Brunson and Ronifer. Ronifer actually is quite a long way off. He's about a lap and three quarters behind the leader but he will I think with reasonable speed be able to kind of get back up into a, a few places up right the lead went down by a second that time so Ongaro in clear space and let's drop down back to Ongaro the uh, blue and white car there he is he gained a second last time round uh, the lead came down to 2.6 further four and a half back is uh, Hampersberg who's going to probably go away from this race with his reputation massively improved Tom Roban Really good work he's put in as well. But you kind of see the big names and the big beasts. And there's two of them here. And we've seen a rare mistake from Ongaro. And he actually gained another seven tenths of a second on Canas. So he is just that much quicker uh, once he gets going. But getting past on this track, as we've seen, is really, really difficult. So it's kind of a test of both speed, concentration, and the ability not to make any mistakes. Now, I get the impression there's a lot of traffic in front of Canas. And he's been held up by it, yep. So it's gone down to 1.3. He's kind of lapping past Quaggery, Martin and Hesse, who are together. And certainly now there are two cars in between Canas and Ongaro. One of them is a very similar colour. JQ moves out to let Ongaro through. Ongaro next will go past a very similar colour Beach RC machine of Max Hesse. But I think in this lap, that 1.3 second lead would have gone out slightly as the, uh, the traffic is negotiated. Quite early on, they made, they're lapping the cars so past about seven minutes. Actually, in for fuel then came Canas, and in for fuel also came Ongaro. So they come in the same time. Visually, Ongaro, a sorry, visually, Canas a little bit swifter. So they went over one and a half seconds between them. It just seemed a little more. It may have been actually because Ongaro is further than the pit lanes. That may have been a slight obstacle illusion, but I think that was a slightly better stop situation for Canas that time. But Ongaro goes back to rejoin the battle. As everyone else goes, the guys they were lapping are coming for fuel as well. So they'll be hoping they'll get released after that's happened. 
And down the straight goes Ongaro, and the lead actually was it was down about a tenth anyway. So they've managed to, and also they've managed to effectively get past a couple of cars whilst they were fueling. So one up, one down. Canas leads. He's got Ongaro getting much, much closer now. Ongaro, absolutely a bit cheated. Now, the thing to remember, of course, is the performance the, the guys have now will not be the performance they have towards the end of the race because it's a high tyre wear environment. They know that they're running on near slicks by the end. So they're enjoying their most grippy moments at the moment. And the, grippy, I think the lead there changed by nothing. The last lap round, um, Car Carlo Carnas was three thousandths of a second slower. So that's how close these guys are. But just to give you an idea, they're doing 35.5, 30.7s. You know, they're about probably four tenths off into a half a second off of the pace we were seeing yesterday in the sprint finals, um, where, of course, you had a much softer tyre because you only had to make at the last 13 minutes. Track, of course, also a little bit more broken up, though it has kept its shape brilliantly over the course of the weekend. Canas pulls away by for two tenths that time. So on Garo and Canas settle down with this kind of gap between them. If you look up there, you can see there's the car on the right-hand side of the screen. That is Canas. On Garo chasing him down. You'll see Canas again there just ahead of the corner. And certainly, I think through the, some of the, through the aerial sections, I get the impression that on Garo's gaining, once you get on the flat sections, there's an awful lot of flat here compared to a lot of uh, off-road tracks. You know, there's a, this whole section here, whilst it's not turning left on the bridge, it's flat the whole way. Yes, it's bumpy, but it's effectively flat all the way around. So you get this big single just here. So it's, a, it's a, one of the biggest tracks I've seen for actual flat circuit where you're not even jumping. Now, yes, the cars are slightly on the ground, but that's a gain that time round. Of course, you, I'm sure you can visually see that. On Garo got about three or four steps closer. Now he's getting much closer at this point. Berg dropped a fifth during this... Uh, Hamburg uh, was fifth during that pit stop strategy. So Raban now is in third, 12 seconds back from these two. Boots now up to fourth, and probably the favourite for the top three if he can keep it together. Everyone's still running. Ronald Falk is about to come out from last place. He's looking to get past Brunsden and take the 11th place. It's all about points, and it's points make championships. There's no drops here, which is the problem that Ongaro has, having, having had to miss round one in uh, South Carolina due to the, uh, his family having COVID. OK, so it's point six last time round. It's been stretched out a little bit this time. Canas a little bit further ahead. There was a massive four short as they come off the back of that bridge because they break hard. And, of course, they seem to get very close together. But, of course, you know, at 10 miles now, half a second is a significantly less distance than uh, half a second at 30 miles now. And it is point six. And now, so that point four, just shy of four second lead, 3.8 second lead. Been, oh, and now this is a chance. But uh, that little, it, unfortunately for, for Ongaro fans, he just wasn't close enough to take advantage of that micro mistake by Canas. And Canas was able to get across the road and stop him getting past. Well, that, that could be awkward. They say, lap, I think that was Brunson they lapped there. Um, and they come down the straight again. They'll be putting the power on. This is where we saw Ongaro go past Canas in the final qualifying heat. And the gap is down officially point two. So effectively, it took about five minutes for, and a pit stop for Ongaro to get back that roll where he lost three seconds. So that should tell you that effectively he's by about 0.6 per second a minute faster. But of course, it's all about the traffic. It's all about how they run. And oh, yeah, they, get, they come out of the uh, tunnel. And it's that only bit of aerial work before they get right down the flat. And this is all the kind of a, a flat touring car section to so run that single up and above and over the Italian corner and over the little ditch jump here which is more tricky. You've got to jump it and then break hard before that right-hand turn. And this uh, three and two, which, to be honest, all the pros have had absolutely no problems with. It's, it's caused a little bit of consternation to some of the RC2 guys because it's a, it, it, they're both probably the three and the two are a little bit on the edge of what they can do back-to-back, -back, sometimes with their vehicles, at the, um, the, the more clubman version. So we've seen quite a lot of slap landings. We have seen a couple of accidents there by the big... Oh, and on guard, really pushing there. He fishtailed out, drifted out of the wide, got a little bit... Oh, and that's the change of the lead there. That's a change of the lead there. It was a mistake, I think, and a bad landing. Now, this is key, because Canas, can he hold him now? He's, he is faster to chase him to follow. Let's see that one again. So they come in. What does Canas do wrong here? Ah, he gets touched the pipe, goes up on two wheels, that sends him out, and he's in the dust, and there's no drive in the dust. So, Ongaro gets ahead, and let's see how he can stretch the lead. Took him... Uh, 13 minutes to lead this race. He's got a 0.7 of a second lead, but you kind of feel that Canas, and you can see it now, Canas is just visually now really pushing a lot hard. Now, the, the question is, is he going to push himself into a mistake, or is he going to push himself right back onto the tail of Ongaro? Now, at the moment, it's on the tail of Ongaro, and he's going to try and get Ongaro to make the same sort of minor error he did under intense pressure. 
Now, the only time that we see Ongaro beat down a couple of people and get ahead of them, he's never really pulled away once he's done that, just because there's kind of a probably about three tenths or four tenths difference between whether you're following or leading. And that's enough, I think, with the speed advantage that Ongaro may have to negate it. And you can see right now, Kanas having absolutely no issue staying with Ongaro. Now, he's the, uh, the, hunter become, the hunter becomes the hunter. And as they spin back left, oh, and that's another change of lead. And we'll just let this one go around and cross the line again. We'll see that one because that was, again, this, they're, having, they're running such a tight line. We'll get them on the straight. It's the unlikely thing is going to happen at that point. Then we'll watch that one again. So they go down the straight. This one, so what happened there? So Ongara comes into that sharp left before the jump. And then, again, it's a double pipe up on two wheels. You've got no drive when two wheels are in the air. So effectively, it's kind of on as even. One pipe hop either side. And Ongaro goes back into second place. So we're 14 minutes in, and effectively, we've only shown you these two cars because it's only these two cars that matter. Under the tail, under the bridge, as Kanas leads on Garo. Ron Falk now... Oh, they both got the boost. A fuel race again. I'm not sure whether either of them stopped the other. Oh, much, much better for Kanas. So Kanas, who went in with a half a second lead, he's got a lot more than that now. Just see, I think actually that in picking up the car, this isn't deliberate. I think the car actually slowed the entry for uh, Ongaro. So he just lost a few tenths. Not, I'm not in any way claiming any sort of um, gamesmanship by the fuel. It's just, a, it's just a fact of location where they are in the pit lane. So Ronafak's up to ninth now. So Ronafak is climbing back through the points. Huge concentration on the face of David Ongaro, as he looks, you know, that will frighten all of the um, Americans. He's running a stick radio. Kanas, though enjoying a lead now, 1.2 seconds. So he gained about six tenths, seven tenths through the pit stop cycle. And now it's a chance of it for Ongaro has to try and catch that back up again. And that's Kanas on the, uh, on the throttle. I don't, I don't, he's a, he's a, he's a, he must get horrendously chapped lips after a race where he's licking and moving his lips. He concentrates away. So there you know. So you have the uh, the Spanish lip seal um, concession. I think I'd hang around with one car as Canas. But he's anything. Some of the I must admit we have seen that some of the concentration faces of RC races are are weird. And that one was, was that was only a three out of ten so compared to some of the stuff I've seen. So Canas now. Looking a little bit happier. He did lose a couple of tenths, but he just seems a little bit happier at the moment. Ongaro. Ongaro, I don't think Ongaro likes the part of the track where you come out from underneath the, um, the tunnel. He doesn't like it when you start. He doesn't seem to like it during the race. I mean, a lot of the drivers have said this far left is a little bit tricky. I do think that actually on a couple of the spots, there's a little bit of the track that's on the side. We are about to come up to the biggest traffic jam in history. These two leaders are coming up to one, two, three, four, five cars who are nose to tail. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, they are all actually competing. Uh, in various different things. So there's about to be a big moment of, uh, of traffic -y, uh, as Ongaro makes a little mistake and drops back a tiny amount. Was that? Oh, well, it's it again then. <laughs> no. Apparently it's contact. I was, I was so busy catching the other cars, I missed the contact. The problem is you can only look at one place at one time. I really must get eyes in the back of my head. So, Kinas now making the most of that minor bit of contact. He flies over. Thank you to my spotter, Matt, there for pointing out the bit when I was looking at other cars. It's always the way. You look away for a second. It all goes terribly wrong. And they come down now. Interestingly, it is David Ronnefalk at the back of this uh, set of cars. So they'll be actually putting a second lap on Ronnefalk, which is what um, Kanas is trying to do. His lead is 1.7 seconds. And I should think about this point. Oh, and he's got all those cars in front of us. Ronnefalk is trying to... And he's, yeah, he's got past... No, he hasn't. He's got past, yes, past Ronnefelt. Ronnefelt's let him go. Next up, I think he's... I'm going to say it's Lee Martin. Might be, I'll wait to come down past me. It's Brett Lark, Martin or Brunsden. Now, it's Martin. Next, Martin very sportingly moves out. But, of course, the problem Martin's got is he can't actually let... He's racing Ronnefelt. So that's slightly different. So he's kind of got to let the driver through that, letting the second car through. And actually, Ronnefelt has just pinged past Martin. So there's now a problem. There's two cars who are fighting tooth and nail in between... Ongara. The Ongara's also got Martin as well. So Ongara now has a car between himself and Juan Carlos Canas, and that's Ronafalk. And at the start of the race, if I told you that Canas, Ronafalk, and Ongara were going to be lying astern, we'd have thought they were all on the same lap, but they're not. That early flame has taken Ronafalk out of the equation. Now Ronafalk 
and oh, big accident over there. So that was that was um, Henning, Henningberg. He's a Henningberg. That was Hampersberg going off there. So Berg's made had an accident. It's kind of cleared a couple of things off. There's a bit of a dis disjointed rejoin. It's quite hard to work out. In fact, Berg, ah, Berg's car has crashed and broken after that, that accident against the wall. Leads a second. Tremendously confusing what's going on. Valente now, but they are, there's Rob out in between. Rob out very, obviously very kindly moves out of the way of Ongoro. So you're looking now at Canas. Let me just say, behind they've managed to negotiate most of the traffic. And if you go slightly wider, that part behind him is indeed Ongoro. So Ongoro and Canas are line astern again. They will be coming up to Valente quite soon, but the confusion that's happening around those five cars having several different battles obviously caused a lot of problems. Ronafat will gain another position because Berg is off the track at the moment. I don't know what's happened to him. And the first two are right together. So, we have calm down. We've been going for... 18 minutes now, and we're going for just going for 90 minutes. So the first 20 minutes, you've just seen these two duking it out, tooth and claw. Um, they are about 15 seconds from the third place man. That is Boots. So Boots has picked up third quietly. That is oh now Ongar is right on Canassi's tail as they came through there. Oh, I wasn't. It was another blue mark car. That was right at the tail. It was Valente, but Valente let through Ongar. Ongar now is now right on Canassi's tail. So with the car jumping off the track there, as they come into the end of the quintuple, up and over. Looks like Berg is out after the big accident. That's a, a, a disappointing end to a very good weekend for Hampus. He just kind of lost it. And I say lost it, maybe like a runaway or a throttle stick or something. He just slammed the fence about there on the track just at the end of turn one. And that car is um, receiving some attention in the pits, but I'm not sure if he's going to rejoin. Osarvo is going out, and he will be out of the race, unfortunately. So Ham Hampus has gone yep. out. We, we hear Hampus Mark has broken a throttle Osarvo. He's out of the race, unfortunately. Well, that kind of explains why he slammed the back fence so hard. It's because he wasn't actually in control of the speed. So throttle servo problems for Hampus. Oh, a mistake by uh, um, Canas has taken him out of the uh, equation. He's rolled over. Quite seemingly innocent roll, that one, um, under very little pressure. So he comes in. To, to, ah, yeah, he, he, he suddenly what seemed like a really weird situation. He just cut that corner slightly too much, tipped it and rolled. So, Ongaro is now our leader, and by 3.3 seconds, but he's coming in for a fuel stop as well. So, fuel stop for Ongaro. He's come up sort of a lap earlier than uh, Kanas. So, he needs to make sure he doesn't make any mistakes at this point, because he's effectively got a nice, comfortable cushion of a lead for the first time in the race, and it took him 22 minutes to get it. There he goes. So... Keeping an eye out to see what's... Oh, now he's made a mistake. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Now, this is going to make it very interesting if uh, if we see a fuel stop from Canas because they've both made mistakes. Where is Canas? Canas in the lead. Canas is taking the lead again. So, so, whilst we were, so Canas actually did take the stop. So he was behind. Canas took the stop, and then the accident from, from Ongaro has put him behind again. Let's see it again. What happened there? So Ongaro... Everything's going far. Oh, he just took a dump and a, a, a dump jump, and then it just dived in, and he just the front wheel locked and turned the car over. That's what pressure is. These guys are under immense pressure, and it's now what? Is that three all or two all or something for accidents? First and second, though, there they are. Still again. This is a, this has been the easiest directive program ever because we just shown the first two cars the entirety of the first 23 minutes. So for the third time, or the fourth time, the third time, I think, it, this is Canas is in the lead. And both of them are sitting there thinking, if I can just get this thing to settle down. All the accidents have been because they've been pushing it so hard, they've clipped little bits of pipe and just turned the car around. They're looking for that one thousandth of a second each time. And perhaps you know, this is the example of why this high pressure is, because if they get to a point where they get a decent lead, they can then start giving themselves a slight margin for error. But they feel with the pressure of the car behind them, there's just no way we can give ourselves any margin for error. No chance. So they're pushing all the way. 
Lead last time around was 0.7 seconds. I think it's gone out a bit time. I think that uh, Ongaro got unsighted by the car that rejoined, which was uh, Ronafat. Wasn't the Ronafat that did anything wrong? He just he rejoined, which just naturally take a little bit of your attention away. And I think that Ongaro may have been concerned about some sort of coming together. Yeah, the lead guy went out by half a second there. Nothing that Ongaro can't pull back. As Kanas comes up to the, another one of the four cars that are painted very similarly. Um, ooh, took a little bit of a run up to that one. Now he gets up the inside of what I assume. I'm just guessing that's Tom Robin. I'm not going to, to say it certainly is. Is, is. is it Hesser? I think it's Hesser, actually. So he comes up in between. It's staying a little bit closer. So I think that's the fastest line. That read out. Oh, Valente, actually. It was Valente. They were repassed after the pit stops. Core Green joins and very sportingly just, just puts the brakes on. Doesn't get involved in the accident. JQ currently running 10th, but his, his concept is just to wait for everyone to break down. So... Kanas and Ongaro coming up towards Hesse in the other um, Beach RC car. And after that, I think their next target is probably Lee Martin. I'm just to check that is the 12, not the 99. That's this Brunson actually. They've got Hesse and Brunson in front of them. The lead is 1.0 seconds. Or well, one second, I suppose, then. So Kanas. Now has two bits of traffic in front of him, which he has to try and get past and not lose any time in doing so. And that was very sport. Now he did, he got, that's a big gain there because the two of them moved out of the way and he had no loss at all in getting past the two of them. Uh, oh, and a little mistake there on the corner from Ongaro. So that's going to cost Ongaro some time. Well, it cost him three tenths of a second. It cost him more than that. But so they've gone past two cars. So behind, um, there's a blue and white car that is behind uh, Canas, but that is not Ongaro, that is Hesse. It will be Ongaro quite soon. So Ongaro, luckily, has got behind Zanchetti in some way. Zanchetti moves out the way as he, as he was re-emerging re from a mine of instant of his own. So I'm thinking, this is, the, this is the point probably where, they, they, where the chasing car particularly gets both hopeful and, and annoyed by back markers. He's kind of hopeful that the back markers give, might give him a bit of an edge. Let's drop back to, to um, Ongaro. He's back. Um, he's the second of those two blue and white cars, um, because he's hopeful that the traffic will help him. But at the moment, it's hindering him, and it's, it's just the luck of the draw. It, it even itself out over the course of several seasons. But not necessarily in one race. Hesse very nicely moves out of the way, and Ongaro flows back into second. Now the good news is there is no more traffic for about half a lap, so these two now have a chance to have a few minutes to battle with themselves. But the net effect of that last bit of traffic is it's a big gain for the S-works of um, Juan Carlos Canas. He's now got two and a half seconds, which, which, which is his longest lead he's got, which hasn't been involved in an accident of any sort. And they bump up and over. But um, obviously he's made a minor mistake because that two and a half seconds is gone. So it's now a lead of about ooh, a quarter of a second. So a little minor mistake there from Canas. I'm going to have to learn not to actually look at the rest of the track at any point because these two just aren't playing fair with my brain. And the lead will drop down to a few tenths of a second. It's seven tenths of a second. So Canas had a bit of a one-second bobble there. He can afford that because he's two and a half seconds ahead. Up and over the ditch jump. And they have been running now for 27 minutes in this heat. The cars and the engines are probably okay. The tyres are beginning to get worn out. I'm sure the drivers aren't as fresh as they were when they got up there at just before quarter to five. It was after quarter to five. It was about ten to five they started the race. So Kanas goes down this time round. He gained about three tenths of a second. You see both the cars now as they go round the uh, the Italian hairpin. Difficult ditch jump. It's interesting. There were, there, there were a lot of people trying that ditch jump trying to cut the corner, but after a couple of accidents, people decided it wasn't a really very good idea. It's a very difficult corner to cut because you have to land and turn very quickly. And perhaps it's worth it over one lap. Perhaps if you're doing the super pole, but it certainly isn't worth it. During a one hour, 58 minute plus two lap final, oh, Angaro, it's all going well. He just completely lost it there. He, that would have been, that effectively would have got him maximum points in Drift World. And sort of, it, it, Matt's eyes lit up next to me because he loves a bit of drifting, but unfortunately it lost him about three tenths of a second. As he fishtailed out to the wide end where, of course, all the dust has been pushed to the edge of the track. You get into that, dust is not grippy, especially as the tyres begin to lose their bite. And he just flung out a, fa a, a lovely fan wave of, uh, of dust. Uh, was actually you know, achieving virtually no form of momentum. In for fuel come both the cars again. Jerome Sartell picks up 
Hanassi's car. Now, there's no loss of time for Ongaro there. So it's probably pretty much on as even on that one. I mean, because they hit the gapping, which was 1.5 seconds, was enough time for Sartell to pick up and turn the car onto its position for refueling without interrupting the progress of Ongaro down the fuel lane. But I would say, and this is probably going to be quite proven wrong almost immediately, I think Kanas has gained a little bit more again. I think Kanas may well have got a couple of tenths. Let's find out. He has been in traffic since then. He's got uh, Hess behind him, in front of him again. And, yep, he gained about seven tenths during that fuel process. With Ongaro. So you'll see our leader, Kanas. He's just to give you an idea. So we'll just I'll call Kanas when he comes over the jump. Kanas, that's it. He's now finished the jumps. So there's two cars and one of these sort of lanes of straight between the two of them up and over and running through. Now, the two cars ahead are Ronne Falk and Hesse, and they are battling, unfortunately. So you, the last thing you want is two cars that he battled, but Ronne Falk's got through. So Ronne Falk now actually got himself back up to sixth place, which isn't bad from a lap and a half down. So Ronne Falk has come back to sixth. Who was that was upside down? Was that Hesse? Yeah, I think so. So Hesse's rolled out the way, which is obviously useful for um, Ongaro. Lead out to 2.3. He's got... Again, one of the between them. One of the fact actually isn't dropping the laps. He's just kind of ebbing and flowing with the fuel stops. So he hasn't just dropped another lap from when we last spoke. He kind of got in there and, and did the, 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 the different fuel strategies and came back out again. One of the just for reference, is doing lap times which are about the same as the leaders, which is of no consequence or no compensation to him because he's lost lap and three quarters to start with a uh, fuel pipe issue. But he will carry on climbing. I don't think he'll get as far as... He, he's got a long way to go, actually, to... Robin, 12 seconds, he might make that one, but of course, as you climb up, the people you're trying to beat are faster and faster and faster. <laughs> so we remain in the situation where Kanas is leading across the line now, and Ongaro is sitting behind um, Ronafat. Oh, Ronafat's now going for fuel, that's going to help the, uh, the visual imagery for Ongaro. But Ongaro, Ongaro looked a little bit ragged actually came onto straight that time, he just kind of gave it a little bit too much uh, throttle. There is an element where the chasing becomes overdriving, and I'd be surprised that it's going to happen with Davide Ongaro, but everyone gets rattled, and you're obviously much more likely to get rattled when you're under pressure and you're very, very hot. You know, it's been, they've done tests on this, and the human brain efficiency reduces with the amount of heat involved in it, which obviously eventually ends up in heat stroke and eventually death. I'm not saying anyone's going to die in this event or even get heat stroke, but it does. there is a reduction in capacity as you go, as we're being attacked by flies here. You can hear a wafty sound, but... Um, There's a waffly sound, but they're carrying on moving. And we now look to see how far the lead is. And I think it's still creeping up a little bit. Over the line now comes the 23 of Juan Carlos Canas. And the 94 has got two cars between them again in two and a half seconds. There's plenty of time to do it. Still 27 minutes and two laps. So none of those cars ahead of him are the ones he's after. Now, what's interesting, what's about to happen, and has already happened, is the leader has lapped Elliot Boots. So Boots actually now is a lap down. So just going to show the pace these two guys have made. Boots, who won the rush, was second yesterday in the two-legged final, is a lap down. Um, now, also, obviously, he's also the, team, the teammate of um, Kanas. So my guess is Kanas got an easy pass. I'm not sure whether it'd be quite so easy for Ongar. I'm, you know, they're... All these drivers, well, perhaps with the exception of Canas, all these drivers are quite good friends. So I don't think they're going to necessarily want to do anything uh, unsporting. Lead at three seconds, so it's not looking great for Ongaro at the moment. That lead is slowly creeping out. So Ongaro, who you know didn't get the pole, was, was a top qualifier, didn't get the, the uh, super pole, has led this race on two or three occasions and made mistakes. Maybe he got the lead because Canas made mistakes. At this point in the race, doesn't seem to have the speed that one car's Canas has. And he's just coming up now to try and lap the man one place ahead of him in third. Ronafat moving forward all the time and is about to um, see if he can overtake Valente. There's a huge gap after it overtake um, uh, Robin, and there's a huge gap to Valente, which he isn't going to make up in the time, I don't think. But he may well still get fifth overall. He carries the car carries on going. So the last time round. There's a slight gap. Oh, uh, that was a. I was lucky. One word for it. What basically happened was that um, 
Boots tripped, a, tripped a, a pipe and then moved out. Lost a bit of momentum. Luckily, as he drifted out, Ronnefeld was able to drift in. Um, and again, there's still there's always cars between them. Always cars between them. It wasn't Ronnefeld. Well, so it wasn't Boots. It was actually Brunston who did that. So Brunston was the person who drifted out in the, uh, the Agama, which is red and black. And I was trying to say times. Lead, the lead's coming down, despite the fact there's still two cars between them. And JQ lets... For, ooh! And that's it. The lead's changed all of a second there. Just it was suddenly going really, really well. It's all changed. So I'm not sure where the traffic to the moment, but what happened there? So suddenly, I think there's been a slight problem prior to that for in the traffic for Canas, because he lost about a second of a lead, hit the edge of the pipe there, and suddenly he's upside down, and he's a long way behind. He's now five seconds off the lead. So from what was looking sublimely, you know, going his way, looking quite easy, just, well, a lap ago, his two and a half second lead has gone to a four and a half second deficit. And now he has to put the... Oh, he's done it again. Same error. Two laps in a row. This time he got away with it. Didn't end up with the thing upside down. But he with a fish tail. It's lost him a lot of pace. You can tell how much pace he lost with the fact that he got caught up by the, uh, the following machine of... So I'll wait for him to go across the line. Of Robba. So... Ongaro leads by 5.3 seconds. With... Just over 23 minutes ago, he's still trying to lap um, Boots, and Boots isn't doing anything of it. So let's see if we can get uh, a concentration on Kanas. Kanas is now about to come under the bridge. Yellow wheels. Here he goes. Now he now needs to start getting his head together. Oh, well, that helps. Fuel stop. They're both stopping on the same lap again. A little bit slow up. Kanas. Yeah, not in the same positive position he was in just one fuel stop before. And back to the massive concentration required to drive these cars. It's, you know, every single time you go around the track, theoretically it's the same because you're an off-road circuit. It's not the same. You can land differently. You can be a bit of dust that wasn't there before. Maybe a bit of traffic that wasn't there before. But Canas just recently won the European one eighth e buggy, which obviously a bit different. That's three ten minute finals, but has been doing you know, well in the Spanish championships, which have long finals, and obviously has been established one of the top races in Europe for a number of years. Coming up to Zanchetin to put another lap on him, and um, he lost about three tenths that time round. I'm just kind of wondering at this point. It doesn't seem to look as uh, as much. I'm trying to put this in a way that the English makes sense. He doesn't seem to be as much faster than the back markers than he was. I think you can understand what I'm trying to say. He, he's not passing with the ease. Now, that could be because he's tightened up slightly because he feels under pressure. Or it could be the car's getting a little bit of its speed during the grip. Or it could just be because I'm imagining it. But he lost half a second there. So Angara was half a second quicker. So Kanas really needs to find something and needs to find it really quickly. Otherwise, Angaro is going to disappear in the distance. It took him 20... Five minutes to get in the lead. Sorry, 35 minutes to get in the lead. But now he's in the lead. He's not going to let it go. Oh, two wheels up. Come on, Carlos. You really can't do that. Because you're going to find yourself dropping back. This is the part of the section where one car looks better than Ongaro. That left-hand set of corners outside of the, the tunnel. But it's now 5.8. He comes and hops over the, dra over the dra drain. Over the ditch. Turns tight. So, puts the power on. Coming up to 20 minutes and two laps to go. Let's go down to the pits with Keenan. So, what's going on? JQ is out. Looks like he broke his car. Uh, just took it over to Tech. Unfortunate for him, he was having a good race. So, that's two cars out so far. So we lost JQ. So JQ's concept of carrying on till everyone else broke didn't work uh, because he's broken. So, so JQ now um, is out. Uh, Hampersberg is out. Um, Ronnefout had problems at the start but got going again. And he's now up to fifth. Oh, well, what happened there? Is that a back marker? Who just, yeah, I think it was. The back marker who got hit there. So it's seven. So it's, it's coming out really quickly now. It's coming out to seven seconds. And, and it looks like there is just literally no answer that... Um, Canas has for Ongara at the moment. Ronafax, a lap behind Boots. Boots has fallen behind Valente, which is interesting. I don't know if this is, this is just the fuel strategy, and it'll change back again in a second. I 
I think it was. But it's now seven seconds almost. This is the forlorn chase at the moment for Juan Carlos Canas. Over the triple and the double. Driving hard the whole way. I mean, he probably feels he's just, you know, he probably doesn't understand where the pace has gone. But, he, and in fact, that last time he didn't go, he's actually about three turns faster. So it's a 20.8 for Ongaro, uh, sorry, 30.8 for Ongaro, and a 30.5-ish for Von Kars Kanats, 30.7 for Boots. So Boots, yeah, Boots was behind Valenti just because it was the fuel stops. They're very, very close. And then you've got um, Ronafout kind of marooned in fifth. He's like a lap behind and, and 20 seconds ahead. So he's... So the interesting thing that without that breakdown, we're probably looking at that Ronafout would have been running third, if some butts I realise, he would be running third, probably around about 15 to 20 seconds off the back of these two. But obviously you, you drive differently if you're lapping rather than being lapped. Good lap that time round again for Canas And Valente has managed to get past Boots, who made a mistake. So Valente's now got past Boots. Canas gained... Uh, three tenths that one. It'll take him 20 laps to get there. He gains three tenths of time. And what's he gained this time? That was, was that a mistake from. No, it's Hess. I thought it was on Garo. Too many car, cars painting the same colour out there. Uh, that time round, it was a six hundredth of a second advantage to on Garo. Let's see if we can find Elliot Boots in the 58. This is the other uh, S Works. We'll leave this leadership battle for a tiny bit and I'll keep an eye on it. Now, Boots is, I'm not quite sure where he is, he's coming towards the end of the lap with the 58. I'm just trying to see where he is at the moment. In fact, he's, yes, he's coming over the line now with the white wheels. That's the 58 going down the main straight. He's got the first corner. This is Boots. Now, Boots is in fourth. He was running in third, but Valente's kind of got the better of him. But there's only two and a half seconds between Valente and Boots. Boots in fourth. Valente is in Third, they're a lap down. It's the same with an S works benefit this project though, isn't it? So can Boots get back? So he was he was ahead on pace. He was ahead of Valente, who has shown nothing all day, and suddenly the final is right there again. But Boots in that particular lap, yeah, he lost another four tenths. No, he didn't completely ignore that. And Boots in that last lap, he gained four tenths. Let's get that maths right, Nicholas. So Boots now fighting for. The third place, Canas now 5.7 behind, so getting a couple of tenths that time round, but it's nothing spectacular, and realistically, um, Ongara is more than a mistake ahead. That blue flash you see ahead, and now you're looking at Elliot working hard. His, uh, wife, his girlfriend or fiancé and daughter have turned up uh, to wish him well, Federica, and the little one. Because he always doesn't live very far away, and obviously um, with the Rossi family who produced the Reds engines. Because Rossi is red. Rossi is Italian for red. It's amazing. Um, so Boots there got that down to uh, three seconds. That time around he was a little bit slower. So it's kind of real ebb and flow between him and Valente. Valente really is fantastically improved. I think, you, know, you look at Valente, you look at Roba, and you look at uh, Hampersburg with the unlucky. Three great performers by some of the younger European racers. I think Canas is um, checking his lead. Canas is gaining. Canas has gained another eight tenths of a second over the last few laps, but he's Still over five seconds behind. Boots is actually losing, dropping off. His Valente appears now, having been slower to begin with, to have a little bit more speed in the car. He gained another couple of tenths there. Boots, you can see, went a bit too wide coming at the end of the invisible speed jump. This time round, Canas is only 3.8 seconds behind. So Canas actually putting a bit of a, uh, a run in. I think that's because they had another fuel stop. I do think that Canas is a little bit quicker in the fueling than um, than the David Angaro team at the moment. It may just be they've got a better bit, bit position in the pit lane. And there's Boots. So Boots is six seconds behind Valenti now. He just stops on the fuel. That's because I think he's slowing down for it. Boots flies over the bridge. Red car, white wheels, white wing underneath the tunnel now. Accelerates up and over. And comes over, start, finish. Fire the car over start finish. Canas lost about eight tenths of a second there. So now still with Boots. Who's scored it. So Valenti's on a very different fuel strategy. He's scored it about 12 seconds ahead. I think actually he may have stopped 
in the last lap. Still running. Brunsden, Martin, Zanchettin, Roba, Hesse, and Ronnefout, as well as Boots, Vendi, Canas, and Ongaro. Canas out to four and a half seconds. So there's kind of a traffic ebb and flow going on there. Ronnefout running around, I'm sure, spectacularly frustrated. Yeah, Valentis 12 seconds ahead. Valentis has done a great job. I think we'll do is we'll try and pick up a bit of uh, Leonardo Valenti action. Fortunately, you won the blue and white cars, all four of which are running. So I've got to identify which one it is. And it's actually the second of the blue and white cars going to the main straight now. Onto the first corner, yellow wheels. That's Leonardo Valenti from the Beach RC team. So Valente has had a particularly torrid day, it seemed. But has turned that round with um, you know, a, great, a, great, a great final performance. So another one of the S-Works drivers. Going fast. Two cars out so far. Now let's be looking there. The two in the next door to Valentia and Boots are right next to each other. You can see by the fact that their heads are nowhere near each other, but they're not anywhere in a similar part of the track. That gap's now 11 seconds. Sticks for Boots. And a wheel for Valente. And that is Valente. You saw his head drifting there to the right as he looks to the far, the left, the far left of the track. Now still five seconds behind on Garo. That's not really changed. He's gone up and down two tenths either way over the last five or six laps. This man, Valente, is 28 seconds behind uh, on Garo. Interesting, that means he's actually um, been lapped by on Garo, but not by Canas. I'm just wondering whether that's just himself unlapping himself. No, it's not. He's, uh, on Garo is just ahead of him. And that's Tom Robin behind him. Just watched, I just watched um, Canas coming into the, the braking zone. The car looks a bit shuddery. So whether that was a particular individual braking issue or whether he's beginning to suffer with a little bit of tyre slip, I'll have to find out. And Garo's lead goes down four tenths that time. I wouldn't read anything into it. Uh, in for fuel. comes. Oh, that's not great. That's not great. That's going to cost him a couple of seconds. And out goes Valente now. He'll retain his third place. Because despite lousing up the movement, oh, now that's oh, now it's not going to go well. Now that's not going to go well at all. Because I think that's going to put Boots back past him again. Quite a long bit of it. They're right together actually. So no, nope, Valente has dropped. I think behind. Okay, let's see what happened there again. Because that was a real crash a thon for Valente. He comes up and over. I think it's initially his his mistake. Yeah, and then he gets, gets piled into, and the whole thing goes horribly wrong. So Valente. Crashed into Roba. Um, but it's fine now, let's talk to me. So the lead goes down to 7.8 seconds. Ongaro and Canas is five seconds, and it's a lap back to Valente. That accident meant that Canas got past him as well, I think. Just check this as they come round and go past me. Is Canas ahead of Valente? Looks like it. So Canas now is 4.9 seconds behind. So in the past four or five laps, the actual lead itself is doing nothing whatsoever. Let's pick up a look at um, the man who's particularly unlucky, and that's uh, David Ronnefout. Ronnefout now is just at the top of the circuit. He's going to turn round white car with the red numbers. That's the giveaway, the red numbers. Better come over the quintuple. That's the triple. That's the double. So in basic speed, there's nothing wrong with what David's done. Unfortunately, at the end of the first lap, luckily... In some ways, he actually rolled over timing and scoring before the car stopped. So he didn't lose the lap by being brought back. But he rolled back into the pits, the pressure pipe, the pipe which takes, which is linked from the exhaust to the fuel tank. In fact, he pressurized the tank to act like a fuel pump. Had come off or had broken. Took them just over a lap and a bit to put it back together again and restart the car. Because obviously the car has fuel starvation, so it doesn't start immediately. Uh, and since then, he's been really trying to battle his way all the way through. He is now, I would say probably to the point where he would realise that even if he hadn't broken down, his best result might have been a third. He's not really had the, uh, the pace in the second half of the race of the two leaders. So there's big shouting going on there. So the lead is now four seconds. Oh, Canassi has been scored in the lead. Canassi scored in the lead. The lead's changed off camera. 
So we need to find Kanas. Kanas is at the top of the, is about to go the, the, the triple and the double. Here comes the triple double. And that's Kanas. He's, he's just ahead of Ongaro. So Ongaro is just, uh, just ahead. So it's just a second that time, last time round. So absolutely uh, all over the top. And they come in for fuel again and just release them. So obviously Ongaro, mate, we heard the shouting. Couldn't work out what it was. It must have been a, a problem for Ongaro. And it was a problem that was six seconds worth of problem for Ongaro. Um, and that has meant that in the lead has gone Kanas. But he's leading by not very much with nine and a half minutes to go. The other blue and white cars are letting the main blue and white car through. And as they get grubbier, the distinguishing marks between the four of them, it gets less and less and less. The two cars have resigned or retired. Neither of them are blue and white, which is unfortunate. Uh, only for colour, not for the people involved, just because of colour identification. But it was all going so well for Ongaro. Then an accident, the whole crowd started shouting, and that was it. So Boots... He may have lost the lap in that one. Maybe a scoring issue on the on that. But so, so hold the uh, hold the boots thing with a pinch of salt. That he's dropped back a lap, so that may come back. And he may actually be running in fourth. But right together now, Ongaro and Kanas they go down the straight. come round onto the quintuple with eight minutes to go. So what was kind of disappearing into a race where we were just showing everyone else who was going round. Suddenly, and we saw, what, five minutes where the, the lead didn't change by a couple of tenths either way. So he's right engaged again. It's, it's fired up massively by the... Oh, it's a mistake again there. But yeah, I think he's got away with it. It's only cost him a small amount of time. Kanas comes over the quintuple. Oh, and going very, very wide. So on Garo. A bit closer this time. It was 1.3 last time. Not 1.3 now. Now, at this point, these guys are running pretty much on slicks, I would expect. And just to say that, fantastic bit of four-wheel drift from on Garo as he goes underneath all the paving section, which is a little bit less grippy than the dirt. So... RCGP round four here at the Osprey team in Gasago in Italy suddenly builds up to a, it was, it was incredibly in, intense for the first half hour. We had a kind of a quiet rest for about 15 minutes and now for the last few minutes, it's right back on again. It's on Garo versus Canas. It's been on Garo versus Canas all weekend. Sometimes uh, on the track, sometimes at the start, sometimes in the pits where their dads will be having a row. So certainly... This is a charged battle. This is a battle that is means something to both the drivers here. Spain versus Italy, of course, as well as S-Works versus Associated. And Canas holding on again, but once behind, Ongaro just seems to have that ability to find... He just gives him a nudge, that way, push it. He's helping him round. Don't help Canas round. He's got enough speed in his own. And it's down to, again, half a second. Kanas and Ongaro. Choose your favourite. Over the ditch jump. Really, this, this doesn't, mean awful, doesn't need an awful lot of commentary at this point because we're just watching two fantastic racers trying to duke it out. Duking it out on cars that are 53 minutes old, 52 minutes old and needing, well, certainly needing new tyres realistically. Good lap there for, I think good lap for um, Kanas. He's gained a couple of tenths, but, you know, it's, it's down the point where they can't make mistakes. And every single change of leadership has been down to, so, and again, lack of uh, slap landing. and going to get inside? No, not quite. It was a slap landing. Took all the momentum out of Kanas over the quintuple there, but he just had enough, just enough to get across the track and stop Ongaro getting past. Very fair driving by both of them so far, which given the fact they had a bit of a, Argy bargy for virtually the whole of yesterday. Is uh, it's good to see they've, they've left that in in the boxes on the pit table and not taking it to the track. But uh, there was a chance, well, half a chance, I suppose you'd say, for Ongaro. And having made the mistake the previous time, you can see that uh, Kanas took a very measured run up to the quintuple at that point. Two of them. 
flying over the invisible speed bridge. We're down to five minutes to go, plus two laps. When that plus two laps, you know, they're the, the one mistake from this race being over, and half a mistake from it being the uh, classic. And they, they, those plus two laps may end up being really important. Now, Inch, they split the fuel strategy this time. They've been coming in at the same time. Off goes Ongaro. Stay with Ongaro. Stay with Ongaro because Canas will come in the next lap, and my guess is they'll be the battle will be rejoined. Of course, this is the last stop, so you've got a bit more flexibility with it. You can stop early or stop late. And perhaps what they're feeling is that if, perhaps they've stopped Ongaro early to give them clean space for a couple of laps. That would be excellent tactics. So you've, if you've got like a minute and a half where you don't have to stop, um, then it's an ac excellent tactic to run through, try and get some clear track, and actually do what the old-fashioned F1 undercut. So is that what they're trying? Are they trying an undercut? I can just say that it wasn't the case of uh, Canas coming in that time. So 6.6 .6 seconds is the lead. That shows you how fast fuel stops are. But has Ongaro got the basic ground speed now? It wasn't a particularly fast lap by uh, Canas last time round. Can he overtake him on the pit stop? Are we going to see a classic bit of pit stop strategy, pit stop magic, work David Ongaro ahead of Juan Carlos Canas? Trying to keep an eye on Canas. See, the Canas comes in for fuel now. Right, so Canas in the stop. He's going into. He's into the hands of Jerome Sartell. The gun is in. The gun is out. He's going down the line, and it's. It's going to be so close to come out together almost. And whoa, that's as close as it's going to get. It almost worked. It comes the other side. He's got him. Oh, they hit each other. Whoa, what's happening now? Now, let's wait. We need to see what happened there. They came out together. So we look at it. Come to the top. They came out together, came up there into the Italian corner. Ah, right. So what happens? Oh, see, yes, that's absolutely six and a half dozen the other. But what happened was effectively, as you can see, Canas went up on two wheels. The momentum that Ongara had pushed him right into the back of him. And unfortunately, it meant Ongara's probably lost about a second in that instant, but it certainly wasn't in any way. No, neither of the drivers at fault for that. that is, if, you, if you look at the dictionary and look under racing incident, that's the picture you'll see. That's the replay you'll see of a racing incident. The other driver now getting out of the way. Ongaro, good tactics, nearly got himself past with just using a fuel stop tactic. Lost a bit of drive out of that corner, actually. But now, with 2 minutes and 59 seconds, plus 2 laps to go, they are back joined again in what has turned out to be an absolute classic of a race, where, effectively, when we get to the end of this 59-minute race, we will have had these two guys, in one form or another, on camera for probably about 49 or even not 52 minutes of it, because they've always been battling together. Now, actually, Canas had a better half lap, and he's looking a little bit more relaxed. He's certainly more than half a second ahead. But Ongaro knows what to do, knows how to drive it. And he comes round and through. So, what's the gap this time round? My guess is probably, oh, I was going to say about 0.9. It's actually 1.1. So, not a great lap for Ongaro, and he can't really afford not great laps at the moment. Two minutes, 14 to go. The back marker moved out the way by some pretty clever marsh. Ooh, really pushing now, Ongaro. Got away that. He was bicycling around on two wheels there. Now, I'm not overly sure whether he needs to push. He just needs to get those laps in. But I think he can then get pressure on Canaz. He's certainly not 1.1 seconds behind now. Two minutes to go. Two laps. Two minutes and two laps. So at least five to go. Over he goes. This time around 0.9. So two tenths going. He, he knows. Ongaro knows he needs to get himself into the peripheral vision of Canaz. So Canaz starts to start thinking about making... Well, starts thinking more about Ongaro than he's thinking about where he's going to drive his car. The advantage of being in the lead, you can completely push people out, effectively out the way by using your sheer force of will. And there he's getting close now as he comes around up and over, down to a minute and 22. So I think they're going to get four more. They might get five more, and they're right together as they go down the straight again. So on Garo, point three now. But this is when the other well-known saying in motor racing comes in, catching is one thing, passing is another, and certainly been proven on this track, passing is another, because you do run the super tight line. If you do run the super tight line, what you get is you get the cars backing out the whole time, and then they can, can't get past. Point four that time, but it's really, it's a case really where Ongaro needs to pick a space to get past. Can he do it? Over the ditch. They have 35 seconds, so they're going to get this one, and they're going to get three more. So there's three and a half laps to go as they flow backwards and forward over the invisible speed bridge. Sure, the people in the pit to tell them how long there is to go. And then at the inside, but not enough. Trying that tight line. It kind of runs out of, a, of ability to get there at some point. It just drifts out. 
The back marker goes to Fuel, I think politically, probably, to get out of the way. And Canas and Ongaro begin T minus three laps. Next time over the line, there'll be two to go because the time will expire in three, two, one, zero. Two laps to go. Canas and Ongaro, absolute serving up, an absolute classic race here, classic duel. Two of the big heavyweights European racing duking it out for an hour. And my, have they duked it out. They both had time to the lead. We both times we thought, well, that one's got it. Two laps to go. Ongaro half a second back. It's going to take something really special now. Or an unfortunate error from Canas to change it because it's such an advantage to be ahead at this track. Oh, and Ongaro losing drive. I'm losing my voice. Just this tiny bit to go now. There's one more lap. I think Canas can smell victory. Canas can feel victory. Canas can touch victory. But he hasn't got victory. He hasn't won it yet. There's many a corner. Ongaro is just going to keep on putting the pressure down. They start the last lap and there's one second between them. And it is absolutely looking like Canas has got the overall advantage. It's only going to be Canas who can lose this one. Ongaro can't make up a second. It's just Canas who could lose it. Can Canas put the... Oh, he needs just to... Oh, and there's a roll over there for uh, Ongaro. And it's all ended on the last lap. Canas just has to do a few more corners. He knows he's won it now. One Carlos Canas will take the win. The S-Works driver, the Spaniard, takes RCGP race four, round four, with an absolute hour-long classic. Second place is going to be Davide Ongaro. Third, Leonardo de Venti. And fourth will be Elliot Boots in a classic race in every sense of the word. Fantastic driving by all of them. In the end, Ongaro lost by three seconds, but realistically lost by, 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 by about 0.2 because they're running so close together. Boots is going to be fourth. He's got the lap back. Ronnefelt fifth, which he'll probably take after his, uh, his issues before. And then fifth will be um, Hesse. Seventh Ronnefelt, fifth, sixth Hesse, seventh Robin, eighth Martin, ninth Zantetin, tenth Brunston, eleven Quagreen. So here is the actual f proper result. One Carlo Canas is in first. Ongaro is second. Valente is third. Elliot Boots is fourth. And I think we really need to give a massive round of applause to both Juan Carlos Canas and David Ongaro for a fantastic race. Well done, Leonardo Valente. Excellent work. Um, then you've got uh, Ronald Falk, Hesse, Roba, Martin, uh, Zanchetin, and Brunson. And Joe Q, Josie Quagri, and Hampersburg didn't make the trip. So that's the unfortunate side of it all. So we'll, we'll soon have a, a point score. And I think that Lefty will be uh, uh, taking the drivers uh, into the interview phase. He's the man of the celebration there with Jerome Sartell. Let's get some driver wrangling. So you need to talk to Leonardo Valente. He was third. Davide Ongaro was second. And one Carlos Canas was your winner. All right, we're here with our, our third place winner, Leonardo Valente. Uh, a very good weekend for you. Tell us about your 60-minute final. Oh, that was a tough one, really tough one. Um, I started from the back in 10th place uh, because I had really bad qualifying this morning. Um, uh, I got caught in a really big accident in the first few corners, so I was like dead last, if not last, like really, really close to be, um, to be dead. Uh, but like, you know, the, the final is 60 minutes. Everything, everything can happen. Uh, so we just try to to stay focused. Um, the cars, uh, the car and the tires were working really good. Also, the engine uh, was working flawless, flawlessly uh, throughout the whole race. So I'm really happy. Uh, excellent uh, uh, position for you. You you won RC2 back in 2019. You come third at RCGP. You are the true success of RC2 leads to RCGP. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm feeling uh, really happy. Um, I think during these two years. Uh, I've been improving a lot. Uh, also, as I said in the in the interviews uh, yesterday, um, I think it's also because uh, in Italy we have a really high level. Um, I'm, I'm used to race with Davide, Berton, Baruffo, Lozan, Capolito, and all of these guys. You you have to push really hard to to stay on front. Okay. Well, good job, man, and congratulations. All right, our second place is Davide Angaro. Uh, Davide, hard race for you. Uh, what was your play on going into the 60 minutes? I mean, I was uh, first and then I take something on the, on the debris, maybe the dirt or a stone. But yeah, second place is okay, happy. 
you and Kanas battled uh, in the entire 60 minutes. Uh, some clean races, you had a few coming together. Uh, are you happy with the way you and Kanas ran just now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I touch him and I with him, so this is how I race. So, yeah, I'm happy about everything. Thanks to everyone, and yeah, see you next time in England, I think, yeah? Yeah, we'll see you in England. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're looking for Juan Carlos Canas. Juan Carlos, yeah. felicidades. Gracias, gracias. Uh, how you you was feeling good at the end of the qualifications? Uh, you had an intense battle with uh, Ongaro. You are coming off a fresh Efra e buggy win. Uh, tell us about your 60 minute final. Yeah, it was at, at the first I go a little bit slower than Ongaro but also for save some tires. But after 40 minutes, all people go without tires and it's more driving. You need to drive more than, get, than have a good tire or something. So at the 20 last minutes, I was okay. Uh, two or three mistakes, but after a bit, little bit faster than on Garo, but uh, after uh, 60 minutes, two seconds, of different is crazy. You, you and Angaro have uh, been having some battles on and off the track. Uh, we're going into the Euros here soon and then RCGP. Uh, how do you feel about you and Angaro at the moment? I don't know. Relationship is like always. It's good. It's not bad, bad. But I don't know. Maybe yesterday with the starting gates mm -hmm. like that is for all people. It's difficult. It's difficult. <laughs> well, congratulations, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you do here in round three. Good job. Okay, and we'll take it over to you, Nick. Thank you, Lefty. Some, uh, and the, some happy drivers, some intermediate drivers, and a chuffed a bit Spaniard there. So I think what we do before we get to the prize ceremony, what we'd like to do is have a look where the, that's left our overall standings uh, at the end of round four. Well, Ronald Funk has managed to retain his lead because he came back well from that terrible start. He, that fifth place, I think, is going to feel like a win for David. And he has 58 points. Rongara scored 47 points uh, this weekend. A couple of points off the maximum. He could have got like 53. So he'll have to go ahead and improve significantly. And he takes over second place. Uh, one cars can ask with that win after the disappointment he had it yesterday. He has 37. So he's climbed up. Obviously, they're still both behind Joe Bornholst, who took part in row one. And Cole Tollard is in fifth. Elliot got 33 points over the course of this weekend as well. Hampersburg, very unlucky to break down, but still got 15. Lee Martin to get up 16 points with solid finishes. Leonardo Valente, nice third place today. That's given him a hat full of points of 28. And JQ, Joseph Quagreen, uh, with 10, despite having the problem he had flaming out. Max Hessler, I think he'll be pleased with 19 points for his guest appearance. He's got uh, full-size racing to do, and it must be nice to come here and, uh, and be competitive and not be outshone. So, effectively, we leave this now, a runoff out from Ongaro, but Ongaro has already kind of unwound most of the stagger of not being in the first race. Teams. Well, S-Works, thanks to that win from one Carlos Canas, take a chunky lead now and also won this event. They got 70 points during the course of the weekend to 62 for Scuderia, Scampi Rosso team associates at 135 from 120. My Arco factory team, they got a, a not many, they're unlucky really. Run off that bad start. Hampersburg with a broken survey. It just got 38. Big gain with Valente and Hesse. They got 47 beat RC and they're now uh, chomping at the bit of my Arco factory team with Agama. Uh, Nemo Agama with 61 and Invisible Speed JQSM have 55. So let's start with uh, a bit of RC2. So the RC2, oh, we have the lovely Evelyn to get the trophies out. Lovely Evelyn. Ciao, ciao. There we are. Um, you're pointing the camera nowhere near where she is. <laughs> 
Ciao, ciao. Okay, uh, we'll start with the RC2 presentation. And in 10th place was Neo Chifo. Neo! You should plaque there. <laughs> In, in ninth place was Pascal Braun. In eighth place was Andrea Cairoli. Happy man. In seventh was Luis Godino. Luis. Here he comes. In sixth place was Scott Walker. Fifth was Rene Koenig. Fourth was Davide Terengi. Oh, I didn't mean, then we go, then we go 14 as well. Sorry, I didn't saw the it's top okay, 10. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> In third was Felix Kogler. Third. And to the podium. Second place was Gabriel Astorino. And your winner was Thomas Musso. And worryingly for Thomas's hands, Thomas was also the TQ holder. He got another trophy. To good. So TQ was also Thomas. No, no. TQ as well. More trophies. Thank you very much. Now you can have a go at the champagne, boys. Thank you very much. I do apologize. I, these four were handed afterwards. <laughs> Well, when they come back, we will try and do the presentation for RCGP. Oh, yeah, can we have every RC2 finalist in the photo, please? Good idea, Lewis. You've got to have all the RC2 together. All RC2 finalists in the photo, please. All RC2 finalists in the photo. Which issues were you in? Uh, it's Leon. Leon. I got given these a bit 13. late. 13th, were you? I don't know where I was. I was on 13. Thanks. Sorry about this. Uh, I've got um, Leon's 13. Yeah, no. Sorry about that. Um, Sorry about that. Oh, Mike's I think he's just a pawn in the
Here comes everybody. I've upset one person. Thank you all. If you can clear all the stuff away. Okay, now it's time for RCGP finals lists. So let's get ready to do that, shall we? The ones here. Are they all here? Everyone around? So you need to go over there. There we go. Uh, Thank you. Sorry. Okay, back to the But the RC2 finalists, who was on 11th, who was on 12th? 11th was a top 12 was in And for men, and Leon Zera? 13. 13. Oh, well, that's wrong, okay. but. Okay. He was 11th. Okay, time for the uh, presentation to RCGP. <laughs> Always goes wrong somewhere. Uh, okay, so first of all, that's a fantastic final. And in third place was Leonardo Valente. Second place was Davide Ongaro. And your your winner was Juan Carlos Canas. With that, that is the uh, the end of the uh, presentation. It's also the end of all our uh, our fun here at uh, Gusago. Um, we will see you again on RCGP. Thank you very much. See you again on RCGP at the beginning of August at the Nemo Raceway. Until then, goodbye from me, goodbye from the team, goodbye from everybody, and goodbye from Italy where it's way too hot. <laughs>